Hi, I'm Betty. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I want to share with you some of my favorite tips to make your holiday baking easier and more streamlined and more fun for you. Unlike general cooking, baking is much more of a science, and so your measuring has to be really accurate in order for your recipe to come out successfully. So this is my array of measuring equipment, and we'll talk about each one of these. This is my collection of measuring spoons, and there's lots of them, because when you're baking, there are lots of ingredients, and you really don't want to have to stop and wash out a teaspoon or a half teaspoon every time you measure another ingredient. Another fun thing that I discovered not too long ago is this great set, which is two tablespoons, one and a half tablespoons, and two teaspoons. It saves time when you're doing lots of baking. And of course, these guys are handy if you're measuring from a spice jar. And you'll notice one of the first things I do is remove them. Well, these aren't removed because I don't use them very much, but I usually take them off this ring because I don't get the point of having three teaspoons dangling while you're using one. So these are my measuring spoons. For the same reason, I like to have a couple of sets of measuring cups. These are standard. I also have a two cup measure and this handy set, which is one and a half cups, three quarters of a cup, and two thirds of a cup. I just find these really do save lots of time. For measuring uh, wet ingredients, you'll want to have a set of uh, glass measuring jugs like this. These are the uh, just the standard Pyrex, which I've had for years and years. And again, multiple sizes just make life that much easier. If the ingredients you're using need to be weighed, a digital scale is a really wonderful thing to have. This one's made by OXO, and uh, I've, I've had it for several years and have been very happy with it. It converts instantly from uh, pounds to grams. Uh, if you're using European recipes, that comes in handy. Although increasingly I'm finding in uh, American baking books, they are using the, uh, the gram or kilogram method of measuring. It is a little more accurate. I find these little prep bowls endlessly useful for measuring out a quarter teaspoon or a teaspoon of salt or a spice to a cup of flour or sugar, I can have everything all set to go once I start baking. Once you've got all your ingredients assembled and are ready to start mixing, you'll need a mixing bowl. This is a graduated size and one of the best tips that I can give you when you're selecting a bowl Always use one one size bigger than you think you'll need. It's something I've learned through hard practice. Once your ingredients are all mixed and you're ready to bake, you'll want a good sturdy cookie sheet such as this. And I like to use parchment paper instead of greasing the tray. It's easier. The parchment can actually be re reused depending on what you're baking. I've reused this three or four times. And when I buy a roll of parchment, one day when I have a few minutes to spare, I take it out of the box and cut the whole box into sheets to measure my cookie sheets. This way, when I'm baking, I don't have to stop to cut parchment. As you can tell, once I start baking, I really like it to flow. I don't like to be interrupted to have to do tasks that are not involved with the actual baking of the cookie.
For getting that batter onto the cookie sheets, my favorite things to use are these ice cream scoops. And as you can see, I have them in several sizes, depending of course on the size of cookie you want to make. And I also am very fond of these mini spatulas. They're terrific for getting that last little bit of dough out, even for scraping uh, a little bit of dough out of, your, uh, out of your scoop at the end. If you're making brownies or any kind of bar cookie, I recommend lining your pan so that when it's finished, you can lift the product right out so that you can cut it more neatly and easily. And my favorite method for lining the pan is so. Turn it over, take your foil, and more or less center it, and just crimp it down to fit, tucking in the corners. Remove this, flip it over, and just pop the foil in. It fits neatly. You've got neat corners. And you've got little handles to lift your brownies or bar cookies out when they're finished. And it's done in a second. If you need to butter your pan uh, for whatever you're making, I recommend these silicone brushes. I just love them, particularly because they go in the dishwasher after you use them. And I keep a little pot of soft butter always in my kitchen. It's great not only for this purpose, but when I want to use it for toast, it's soft and I can spread it more thinly and not use quite as much butter. So you just take your brush and give that a quick butter. And do each side. Oops. And you're done. All ready for your brownies or bar cookies. I hope these will help make your baking season easier. For more recipes and information, please visit my website at bettyskitchenfair.com.